your host, Tiffany Glilland, an Australian business and mindset coach with 10 years experience in online marketing and the creator of the Business Bravery Framework. I help coaches like you to be brave so you can stop dreaming and start doing that next big brave step and finally make more impact and get more clients. From speaking on camera to selling to launching, my approach to bravery helps you take bigger leaps without the mindset spirals. It's the secret ingredient to bigger results. In this episode, I am being brave and opening up about a recent family medical emergency and how I used the business bravery framework to manage changing priorities, feeling a bit more in control, as well as keeping my business moving forward, uh, just as things were perhaps (laughs) uh, not necessarily going according to plan. And I'll talk to you about that a bit more. So this is a great episode for anyone trying to manage competing priorities around their business, such as family, a day job, illness, or health concerns. You may even feel a little guilt or perhaps like you're just not on top of everything when these situations are coming up and you might get demotivated and not do anything at all because you'll never get it all done. Uh, which might sound crazy to some people, but some of you I'm sure will know what I mean since that's how I used to handle these situations a lot. So yes, this episode is kind of my answer to that conundrum, that uh, that quandary, I'm using all these big words, uh, you know, that that question of <laughs> how do I handle this? How do I not just drop everything in my business? This is Quite oftentimes, my clients, when they first start working with me, they are in this situation, the family stuff comes up and everything in the business just drops. And there's absolutely no judgment if this is you. Uh, I have been there in the past too. However, that might not be how you want to handle these things. So this is where I'm coming from with this episode and sharing how I use the business bravery framework for this. So these, what I'm sharing today is business, marketing, and mindset things that I do in my life and my business in these kinds of situations. And I look forward to sharing this episode. It's going to be part talk therapy, part, uh, you know, (laughs) my tools and everything that I go through, and hopefully part motivational inspiration for you to make your own decisions about how you want to handle these situations and handle them ahead of time. Like, sorry, like making the decision sort of ahead of time or in the early part of these situations coming up about, okay, who do I want to be? How do I want to handle this? And then putting your own plans in place of, okay, here's who I want to be in this situation. Here's how I'm operating as my best self, as opposed to perhaps a more reactionary approach to these kinds of things, which has definitely also been me in the past. Please know that (laughs) I am not uh, completely, uh, you know, these are lessons that I've learned and this is why I'm passing them on, okay? So yeah, just hopefully this will be some motivation for you on that side of things. So now who's ready for some business bravery inspiration? Let's dive in. All right, so now I've changed to my other set of notes, which are a little less word for word. Uh, So the reason I'm recording this solo episode in this fashion, like normally I record the intro separately, that kind of thing, is because I'm in this situation where I don't have all the time in the world. I don't have as much flexibility uh, at the moment. Uh, the situation is like my my mother is sleeping and I don't know when she's going to wake up and she's going to need my help. So I'm recording an episode <laughs> and this means I don't have all the time in the world to do all the steps and everything. So I'm cutting through that. So I wrote my podcast introduction and now I've just done it and I'm not going to have to edit that. And it's a little rough and ready. So the idea of this podcast episode and I'm going to tell you how I came up with this outline because in some ways it's somewhat genius too just the amount of things out there that can save us time it's awesome so the outline for this is like navigating family emergencies with the business bravery framework I will 
likely come up with some other kind of title or something by the time this goes up but this is what I'm working with at the moment this is kind of what I'm doing and because just recently in fact the week before that I share that I'm recording this episode in November of 2023 there was a medical emergency with my mother who I already care for on a part-time basis and uh yeah like just sort of <laughs> this whole well-planned week of all the things that I was going to do was just like well that's not on the table anymore and then it's like okay how do I keep things moving forward how do I resist the temptation to maybe just drop everything because now it's like <laughs> the what is it I have less and less time to do the ever-growing to-do list right and so it's like, how do we work through these things? How do we make some decisions and still feel okay balancing things moving forward? One of the things that I'm weirdly excited to talk about in this situation is, uh, okay, this is this is going to sound strange, but you guys, some for those who don't know, and it <laughs> could be any of you, most of you, some of you, I don't know, I don't have children. That is not how my life didn't work out that way. However, I have been caring for my mother in very various capacities, you know, scaling up, scaling back, that kind of thing, since I was 15 years old. So, but for the last couple of decades or whatever, like most of it, it hasn't been, yeah, like, there has been, like, I have been able to sort of say, hey, these are my working hours, these are my boundaries. Whereas now I'm in a situation where mum needs some help, you know, like I'm I'm helping her walk to the bathroom, making sure that she stays steady on her feet, that kind of stuff. So I can't just say, hey, the, I'm sorry, it's my working hours, boundaries, buddy, you know, <laughs> boundaries, man. So I can't just say that. And so now it's like, okay, I I get to try out this way of planning and operating my life, which it's just kind of, it's just interesting to have this experience because then when I'm talking to other people who are like, I have kids and I need flexibility and things, it's like, okay, well, here's how I have navigated that for myself. Bearing in mind that for the last few years, I've trained myself into this, you know, hey, these are my boundaries, these are my working hours and things like that. Although I've had to have flexibility with my own chronic health and, you know, chronic pain as well. So I have some experience in this, but this is, this is a little bit different. Anyway, this is how I'm, I'm navigating through this. So uh, I will give you some more details about this situation that I'm in and that kind of thing. And just also go through and sort of tell you about how I used to handle these situations just because this is not the first time this has come up uh, for multiple different family members and things like that. And yeah, just how I used to handle it and how that used to affect my business and then how I handle it now and just how I'm happier with that. I do want to say right out front that I am not handling this perfectly, but what I am doing is perhaps not making myself feel miserable not beating up on myself because I'm not getting enough done. I'm never going to get enough done. Those kinds of thoughts are not going through my head as much, which makes it a lot easier to take action in my business. I'm not sort of being like feeling guilty when I am, you know, like looking after mum. I'm not feeling guilty about all the work I'm missing and the things I should be working on. Uh, because I'm planning in a different way and when I'm doing this kind of work I'm not feeling guilty about like not looking after mom and that kind of things because we have some systems in place and things like that too however of course uh hang on I'm just getting a message on my phone which is my mother okay I'm gonna have to pause I think yes I have to pause she has questions about pills and things all right uh, hold on a second. Here it is in action. Okay, now I'm back after helping mum out and distracting her from pain with an ice cream. Yes, I'm a terrible, terrible parent. Anyway, <laughs> all 
All right. Uh, so I guess uh, I'm going to dive in to sort of what happened. We've all kind of been there. Uh, like my, my mother was traveling overseas. She told me she had to come back because she'd had a flare up of a thing called bursitis, which is kind of like fluid on the hip. But actually, when once she got back here, we realized just things were just a bit, a bit more. She was in a lot more pain the last time she had this and that kind of stuff. And then she was really concerned because she had to take something like five flights to get back to Australia. And even though I said, you know, why don't you go somewhere where you are? I'm sure they'll have access to the injection and stuff like that that you had last time. She had a steroid injection. And yeah, and she was just like, oh, look, it's just, it's all, it's all too hard <laughs> because she's really struggling to walk and walk on her own. So yeah, anyway, she's, once we got back and she got back here and everything, uh, and then she sort of says to me, hey, look, um, so my legs are swollen and I've been on all these flights and I'm a bit concerned because there's pain and everything. And she has some medical history, makes her a higher risk for things so it's like okay we need to go to the hospital and check these things out and yeah so then um yeah so that was on a Saturday night so that didn't quite interrupt things it wasn't until you know we were there for a couple of hours and then you know they said oh look you'll have to come back for tests like this is a small town so it's like yeah we need to do an ultrasound to check but we can't do that for two days so you you know go home and we'll call you come back on Monday that kind of thing and then on the Monday after she had the test then we had to sort of wait in line again but on a Monday during the day for getting our test results back from the medical professional so yeah this is where <laughs> I had I had some things planned. Like I knew that there was going to be more doctor's appointments and things this week, but I didn't realize I was going to be, I thought we were just going in for the ultrasound. I didn't really think about that. I would have to wait there. And because like our normal, um, you know, general practitioner doctor, it's like a two to three week wait to get in to see her. For normal stuff, you can sometimes get, they told me you can get an emergency appointment, but you've got to phone every morning at 8.30 to see if you can get in. I'm like, okay. And it's like, I have calls and meetings and things at that time. So it's just like, okay, all right, doing my best. So this is the kind of like what's going on. And then, you know, like it's having to do extra medical appointments. I don't know what's coming up. I, you know, <laughs> spend all these hours at the emergency room on Monday. And luckily, like I had kind of planned for this. Basically, it was kind of like, like on the Sunday that weekend, I decided, okay, all right, I'm going to make my decisions in advance, okay, right, of, all right, <laughs> number one, we need to shift into a bare minimum week, right, this is just keeping the lights on, we're not doing anything fancy, uh, you know, we're not trying to do all of the things, like, what do we need to know, like, what is a bare minimum week, what's going to keep everything moving forward, right, so this is kind of my first step of, the the business bravery framework when you're sort of planning things out um sorry how do I explain this so this like when I'm using the framework in this way this is kind of step one for me it's like like step one is kind of you know deciding who you want to be right at the end of the week to come okay and so this is a case of all right and it's kind of interesting actually because I did say Oh, a couple of months ago, how I wanted to try out having four hour work days just to test that out and see if I could make my business run more efficiently, have more time for some other things and also keep growing my income, things like that. That's where the idea for my upcoming group program is coming from to allow me to do these kinds of things. And yeah, it's just, it's sort of interesting how I haven't really gotten in, like I, I've started taking step towards that, but it's like minuscule little steps, right? And now the universe is like, okay, now you have to make this work. <laughs> it's like, here's a real good reason why, you know, a four hour work day is, is what you're going to be doing. So it's deciding what is that bare minimum week for me. And so for me, it's a case of, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to, 
look at uh, sort of look at the things like okay, <laughs> what client calls do I have on? Uh, you know what you know what podcast recordings are in like what what meetings are in my calendar and then what's the bare minimum it's like what's the bare minimum amount of content I need to create I have two assistants in my business who help me so luckily they can help me and then it's just sort of step two is then going into communicating with clients team and family and seeking help and just also you know talking to my husband and, you know, getting him to help me out where he can and that kind of thing as well, bearing in mind that he has his own chronic illness. So I can't kind of <laughs> expect him to pick up all the slack. It's just a, okay, here's where I really need you to help me and that kind of stuff too. So kind of like sitting down and just making that decision around what is a bare minimum week and then putting that into my calendar. So what I've done, like now I'm in week two, what I did for week one uh, as well is just kind of like, okay, sort of it's just basically, right, I've got four hours to work. Those four hours could happen at any time. Like there's just, it's like there's just things in my calendar. Like I don't plan out. There's a bunch of white space in the last two hours of the day. None of that gets filled up because everything else is going to move around. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because mum will wake up, she might need help, she has questions, you know, things like that. And so because of that, we're like, you know, moving things around and that kind of thing. So that's how I'm getting through with this as well. But at the moment, like things that I was working on, like uh, my new masterclass that I want to test out, the bravery board masterclass, I haven't come up with a cool name for it, but um this is this thing, I've talked a little bit about it in my content, just about, you know, if a vision board did the cyber nasty with journaling, meditation and planning, here's what we would be doing to, to plan out brave things. And this is sort of part of my, my business bravery framework. The reason I want to test it is because I haven't bought the visual, like putting things on a vision board with this, but also working through all of that negative thinking before we even get into doing the stuff. That side of things I've just always done in journal format because it was just easier and quicker for me to work through so I want to test that out and I want to test it out with other people to see how I go teaching it to other people and other personalities expectations other people's experiences of things like meditation things like journaling uh you know just just how that all gels and works with people and just how how that all works so that kind of thing is sort of on the back burner <laughs> because that's sort of like a growing my business thing although it's not going to be on the back burner for too much longer it's just a matter of okay right now uh, I need to be free to do these things I've got to do I have to do content uh, current client commitments and then any service-based work that I have going on that kind of thing so yeah so really with the exception of me getting this podcast done which is kind of interesting like I'm actually it's now the Monday after last week, this should have been done on the weekend. I prioritized family and spending time with my husband and just sort of relaxing a little bit, as well as a ton of housework and just things like that. Like, yeah, just because, you know, we had a couple of days, like, I don't know, was it, I think it was Saturday, mum just wasn't having a good day and just needed me more and things like that. So, yeah, it just because of that it was like oh look I can push myself and you know get this done and get it done now or, you know what this can go out a day later <laughs> and that is okay you know it's not the end of the world and it'll go out a day later and in fact the my guest who was on last week I haven't even done the promo all the promo posts and things like that so I was like you know what I can spend a couple of days promoing her stuff this will go out a day or two late just so then that way she gets her time that was promised to her and then this will come out and this is just how we're going to roll and being okay with that. Like the key to this is just not being so mean to myself like I used to be, right? So uh, mum's had various health things come up in the past and I've been in various states of anxiety going through that. Clearly, I think you can hear from me that I'm not going through all of the anxiety that I used to years ago. And that is just in part from all the work I've done on my mindset and just 
being able to go, okay, hey, you know what? Here's what my bare minimum week looks like. And I guess I have experience from that, from managing my own health concerns and things like that. One of the things I want to say that was in my bare minimum week that is a non-negotiable, is, was, it's like it still is, it was when I made this decision a week ago, is that uh, movement, meditation, and journaling. One of those had to happen for me every day, okay? Doing some form of movement, some like meditation or journaling just to keep on top of all of the stuff, process my own stuff, process my own emotions, my own feelings, my own frustrations and things like that. Just sort of be in touch with myself, but also having that just movement thing that also just really helps me keep on top of things. And for me, uh, while I've been doing my some of my workouts and things like that, sometimes it has been just like I'm going out for a walk, getting my husband to just be here um, with mum. And so I can go out for a walk and just looking after myself that way in ways that I wouldn't have allowed myself to before because it's like, oh, I couldn't possibly look after myself previously. This is how I used to think because it's like, oh, you know, well, mum's sick and I'm not earning enough money. So I can't like, you know, that stuff comes later, <laughs> which is not how I can actually function. This is the stuff that helps me stay stronger, stay on top of things, stay on track and have less anxiety at the end of the day especially when we've had a couple of nights where mum's woken me up in the middle of the night because she's been in pain and you know I've had to help her and things like that so I'm having broken sleep not exactly having best night's sleep at the moment we're having to keep lights on so if she does get up in the middle of the night she can see it's just yeah um <laughs> so I'm I'm not getting the, the best sleep so it's like I have to look after these things so Step one, recognizing my bare minimum week. You get to decide what that is for you. And just for anybody who probably needs to know this, like you get to decide what that is. You get to test it out. And then at the end of the week, you get to learn from that without being mean to yourself. You don't then have to turn around and go, oh, well, I didn't get it done. Uh, um, it was a phrase I heard recently. Oh, I feel like my week just went off the rails and things like that. It's like, actually, you know what? Like you get to make these decisions and adapt and change and things like that and learn from them. It's not a case of you're going to get this right the first time. Like it's taken me some time and some years to get to this point where I'm, you know, <laughs> I can make these decisions around what a bare minimum week is and kind of get through it. Uh, even with, oh, so funny last week, it's like I had all that time in the emergency room and I was, you know, doing a little bit of work, but I couldn't do lots because I was kind of there without realizing it. I didn't have a charger for my phone. And then on Tuesday, service-based clients got in contact with me and suddenly they wanted work. It's like, like the universe knew, hang on, don't leave us. We need you. So then I had to fit that in. And that was stuff that I hadn't planned, but it was stuff that was going to help me keep the lights on, so to speak, and that kind of thing, keep that money coming in. So, yeah. You get to decide what the bare minimum week is and you get to test it out. Step two is just like communicating with clients, team, family, and also just like asking for help from the team, from my family members and all that kind of stuff too. Step three from this is then practicing self-kindness and just focusing on health, which I talked about before, but I didn't say, hey, this is step three because this is how my brain works. <laughs> even though I've got notes in front of me uh, yeah so just that whole part of you know like my like part for me for a bare minimum week was is just practicing the self-kindness you know and focusing on health and for for self-kindness in these situations I, I want to talk about how okay so last night I did not get much sleep I had to be up early for a podcast episode I had been late helping mum and then I also stayed up later than I should have because mum was all sorted and I actually I sort of just had a moment to just be like oh here we are this is me without having responsibilities right now my husband was around to help with things in the evening and then I stayed up a bit later because I was just enjoying that feeling for a moment and so yeah um I didn't get as much sleep I didn't sleep well had to get up for this podcast recording this morning which I did and 
uh, yeah, thankfully mum slept through it. So I managed to get that all done without <laughs> interrupting. I was thinking I might have to forewarn whoever I'm recording with. It's like, hey, just so you know, this could come up and I may have to pause. So that's okay. But then I just want to say that I got through most of the morning and then lunchtime, I had to make lunch, do some dishes. That's my normal routine. Then I was supposed to get back to work and I kind of just couldn't. I had no oomph. It kind of happens when you only have five and a half hours and I had to skip my morning workout it makes it harder for me to focus, which makes me sound like I'm somebody with ADHD. But so far as I know, I don't actually have that, but I just know these things that just help me feel better. They help me channel the energy, the the focus, that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, I didn't beat myself up over that about not being able to get to work, back to work. You know what? Um, I just was like, you know what? Like at the moment, weirdly, my my schedule for the week has a lot of white space in it. And so it allows for time like this for me to have an extra hour where like, yes, I'm I'm kind of scrolling online, not completely doom scrolling, but just <laughs> making the decision of I'm just, I don't have the oomph to get back into it. This is a situation where I used to make myself feel so bad about it. To be like, you know, oh, how are you going to get to that million dollar business if you can't even work when you say you're going to work and all that kind of stuff? And oh, just even saying this out loud, all the muscles in my body start tensing up because this is an old pattern of mine. So I'm very grateful now that I don't feel that way, that I don't do that to myself through years and years of journaling, getting to know my own habits and repeating patterns and things like that. So now it's it's kind of interesting. It's like, it's going to sound crazy. It's like I can lean into just being lazy for just a little bit longer because I know that after a while, my brain will be like, you know what? Yep, we can do this. We can just, we will set a timer. It's kind of like I have these systems built in or something in my brain now where it's like, cool, all right, all right, we took an extra hour. All right, what if we just... What if we just set a timer for 10 minutes and do something? So the other way I break through these kinds of things is um, to have kind of like a situation where um, I sit down with the journal and just write down each tiny little step. Here's what I've got to do. And then just start marking them off, you know, okay, I'm going to open up the computer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that and just help my brain get like so it doesn't stay stuck in the monkey mind, just kind of be in that space of, okay, yes, I can take these steps forward, things like that. So, yeah, just focusing on those one little small steps at a time. So I just want to say, like, through the situation, I just practice self-kindness and kind of trust in myself that it's like, no, no, I'll get back to it. It will be okay. In the past, I would be, I would beat up, I'd beat up on myself. I would beat myself up so much that I wouldn't want to go back to work <laughs> because I already felt like, oh, well, I'm never going to make it to my goals and I can't even do this one thing and all I have to do is record a podcast. Like, honestly, like, there's so many things that I'm supposed to have done today, including, you know, phoning the doctor and trying to talk to them and that kind of stuff too. Um which just, I think it's going to be a tomorrow problem now. And yeah, that's just, he is like, it's just being okay and just being kind to myself about that. And it's like, no, 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 it's not that I can't get it done. It's just like, actually in this moment, I'm just making a choice to be kind to myself and understanding that I haven't had as much sleep and that I do have these other responsibilities. And you know what? I can be kind to myself. I can trust myself that I will come back to these things. But I do also have these tools that kind of have these things built in. So it's like I don't end up spending half a day or a full day. Like there have been times, not so much in the last couple of years, but years ago when I first started my business, it's like <laughs> scrolling online, I could be doing that till four o'clock and then be like, oh, I've done nothing. And then I would start work and be working and then my husband's home from work going oh, I thought we were going to spend time together and I hadn't done anything because I had been kind of 
too afraid to start because it wouldn't be perfect and just oh man all of these things that I had to work on oh my gosh and yeah luckily at those times I had a day job which obviously I didn't do that before so it wasn't as big of a deal and I was only sort of (laughs) failing myself like you know failing clients like if I've got client deadlines and things like that that stuff gets done I never miss that always those things that you kind of commit to yourself that can be harder to get done and yeah this is where I just encourage kindness to yourself especially in these kinds of situations where things are out of your control and like actually sometimes like and it's it's weird it's like you know is this procrastination laziness or self-care and it's like well, it's a little bit of all of them in this situation, but, you know, it's like, okay, if this starts going on for too long, then maybe we're getting into procrastination, but maybe it's okay to just be like, you know what, it's a tough week. We can take an extra hour to just do nothing, let the brain catch up, trust that I'm going to get back to it. If I start taking too long, though, then I'll set a timer to get back to work or I'll pull out the journal or that kind of thing. So that was very long-winded way of saying just being kind to yourself so that then you can take action it's like I can move through those things by being kind to myself and I move through them faster whereas if I'm beating myself up then I definitely don't want to do any work I end up taking a whole day of just not doing anything and it gets even harder to start the next day because it's like oh well you didn't do anything today and our brains are kind of programmed to use our past experience as evidence of what's possible for us so this is where it can be hard to break out of those patterns and that's why I use journaling and just even just setting a timer for five minutes or just you know get up and do something else um you know it might not be the thing but it's like get up from the desk stop scrolling just move around the house that kind of thing can help just break the state so that you can get back into doing what um, you need to do for longer term success I suppose so that's sort of step three self-kindness focusing on health that whole breaking the state getting up and moving that all helps with your health too so yeah that helps and then sort of step four is just finding effectiveness in short time increments so Part of this too is just me like just planning for, okay, my new normal at the moment is that I've probably got four hours a day to work. So because of that, I need to come up with some strategies and things like that and just being aware of this kind of thing. But then another thing is just how effective like 10 minutes can be, you know, um, just how effective 10 minutes can be. Sometimes it's just like, you know, you can get a bunch of dishes done in 10 minutes. Um, I can actually get a shower done in 10 minutes. Like oftentimes my brain just wants me to go, no, showering, take the ages and this and that. But actually, you know what? Sometimes it's just these little 10 minute tasks that help keep things moving um, to just help keep moving things forward. And it's like, you know, sometimes you can get some stuff done. Like you can get a post done in 10 minutes, right? Especially if you're not overthinking it and you're just like, Yep, we're keeping things moving forward. It's bare minimum week. And yeah, you know, 10 minutes or 10 minutes to find an old post to repost. You know what I mean? Like there's just all these ways that we can kind of keep things moving forward, keeping on top of things. One of the other things that I did, didn't do so well that I I wish I had done a bit better was I did drop off in Instagram near the end of the week, just as I was getting a bit more just mum was needing more from me and things like that having a couple of bad days with the pain and everything so just I just didn't have as much oomph for the Instagram and then I felt bad for dropping it and it was harder to get back into it and it's like okay I've just got I just had to set a timer it's like you know what we're just going to do five minutes we're just going to do 10 minutes that often leads to extra work and it's just this is that whole getting over the hump of starting so and this, what I've talked about here is sort of my business bravery framework, obviously, or well, maybe not so obviously, like the business bravery framework is kind of this whole thing of planning and 
just like overcoming negative thinking in order to get things done. But it's sort of this situation of it's like a mixture of, you know, the marketing and the sales, but also it's just like this whole process of just keeping my my brain in gear to help me keep taking action. And especially as someone who formerly dealt with uh what do you call it who formerly dealt with kind of imposter syndrome and just not feeling quite good enough and being able to find all the evidence of not being good enough when I would you know set some sort of uh what do you call it when I'd set some sort of goal of all right I'm going to get this done this week and I'm definitely going to keep on top of it whether that be exercise content creation uh these days, it's like reaching out, talking to people, making offers, all that side of things, this more salesy side, things like that. I would, you know, do it for a little bit and then I would miss a day and then that would cause me to miss everything because it'd be all or nothing. And so a big part of these tools that I have just help me to keep moving forward, to keep shifting into this identity of somebody who runs their business who earns more money, who, you know, has that $1 million income goal or even five figures a month income goal. Do you know what I mean? Just It's just like, like this is kind of who I want to be. It's like I want to have a balance, that balance between family and work, and it might not be equal. It might not be even. And it maybe needs to be a bit more... Uh, flexible than it used to be and this is also I guess some of my challenge is just that whole you know (laughs) mum's needs don't necessarily fall into these are my working hours anyway I've talked about that I guess what I wanted what I meant to say was just around this whole the business bravery framework because these are the tools that I do to help me be brave and to help me manage my mind And as part of the bravery framework, obviously, we do look at marketing and sales and things like that. That's part of the toolkit to help you be brave, to grow your business. But just this other part is just managing the negativity and things that that can come up, right? Like that that feeling of guilt. Like I, I haven't talked about it, actually, but the guilt I used to feel between being pulled in all these directions, like when mum would have health stuff. Um, when my father was sick, um, he's no longer with us, but when he was sick during that time, I, like I dropped all work stuff, um, you know, day job, everything. I just dropped it all just to, you know, be there and not saying that that was a bad choice or anything. Um, second. Um, Yeah, so not saying that that was a bad choice, but just how now that I have a business and if I don't do certain activities, I won't keep earning money, things like certain things have to keep in place. And I want to be able to keep certain things in place as best I can and make those decisions. And this is how I do that. Uh, Another part of it is just like journaling through the thoughts and things like that and just like not being so mean to myself and just being like, here's the phase I'm in and it's okay and I need to do things slower and that is okay and here's where I'm at right now and just respecting that and feeling good in those choices and that's just how I'm keeping moving things forward. I do want to say though that if you're in a situation uh, okay and I'm back and Where was I? <laughs> and I'm back. So I've broken down these steps of sort of this section of the business bravery framework, I guess. Um, sort of, I guess the reason why I say I guess is because like it's a framework and it can apply to all of these different areas and it's sort of like choosing which tools that you want. And as I talk that out, I kind of, I know for some personality types that can be quite confronting or quite scary. 
for other personality types it's like cool show me the tools help me choose and yeah I guess that's where this comes in but really like uh, here's here's where I find this an interesting thing because when I'm out there talking to people most people are just like no I want the marketing and sales that's my thing and it's like well actually like all of those marketing and sales tools they can only get you so far if you don't have your mindset in check and if you're like being mean to yourself like just from someone who was like I was so mean to myself like I had all that marketing and sales background I went to university I then relearned everything in the online world because the online space was barely a thing when I went to university. And when you do marketing at university, they train you to do marketing in these big corporate corporations, which I haven't worked in. I've often been a one person marketing department and, you know, maybe with some help here and there. So just, I know from experience with my clients, it's like, you know, like you can be like, oh yeah, um, I've got this amazing website or something, or, you know, oh, I've got, I've got this one thing that works or, you know, oh, the, the guru, the marketing person told me I need to go and do this. But if you're then being mean to yourself every time you go out and do it, or if, you know, any time somebody says no, you then start rethinking things. Uh, I've been talking to somebody recently who she has a lot of people contact her and tell her that things in her business aren't working right and that they can help fix them. And like, yet, like she just signed a bunch of clients recently and it's like, well, let me take a look because it's like, if you're signing clients, that means what you're doing is working. So you might not need to change anything. And it's like, you know, giving people that confidence, that side of things is just, is just as essential when it comes to growing your business, attracting clients and all of that good stuff. Right. So this is why those tools from my perspective, are just so essential because if you're there feeling anxious all the time or any time you hear no or you're worried about hearing no and then you're holding back, you're not showing people your passion, you're not connecting with them, you're every time after you say something, you start thinking, why did I say that? That's dumb. Why did I record that? And, you know, even part of me now wants to just stop this recording and just redo it because I've clearly been talking for too long. And anyway, but I'm not going to, I'm going to put this out there and yes. So just, this is why the business bravery framework just has all of this stuff for keeping the brain on track. It's the same as like for Olympic athletes and things like that, you know, they have to like envision themselves crossing the finish line, crossing the finish line first, you know, and like they do that visioning over and over again and that's what we have to do in our business as well is doing that visioning of where we want to be who we want to be and that's what this bravery framework does it's like okay who do I want to be at the end of this week who do I want to be at the end of this quarter what what do I need to do differently and then as you start planning it out what negative thoughts start coming up <laughs> what am I going to have to deal with and let's deal with that ahead of time so then we can be more effective when we're in the doing because when it comes up, you'll be like, oh, that's right. I dealt with this beforehand and I can take a look at this and then go, okay, here we are. Here's where we're at. And, you know, I, I've dealt with this. I have an answer for this problem. So much like with me staying up late last night, <laughs> the, the always fun repeating pattern of mine of you had a tough day, you deserve this, you know, and it's like actually... I really need to get more sleep so that I can be awake to help mum to do more things Then I wouldn't have had that slump in the middle of the day maybe. And I still might have actually just given everything that's going on, things like that. But uh, yeah. So this is why we need to keep kind of on top of the brain side of things, the mindset side, that how are we talking to ourselves? What's the negative thinking? And then also through this process, spotting negative thoughts that you don't realize are happening at the time, right? So last night, even though I've repeated this process so many times, uh, I still was like, no, you had a tough week. You had a tough night. You can stay up a little bit later. And then I don't know what happened. Like I just lost a whole hour. It's like, how did I stay up this late? And yeah. So 
it's just being on top of those kinds of things. It's like, okay, now I need to work through some stuff, change that for next time. So this I've sort of shared with you kind of these four steps of the business bravery framework that I apply in this situation. I hope that makes sense that the bravery framework, it's not just for mindset. We There's marketing tools and sales tools and things like that, but it's really this mindset side that unlocks everything for me, especially with my anxiety, especially with having to manage the energy around my chronic health and chronic pain, my caring responsibilities that have now gone up to, you know, DEFCON 1, which is the the higher level, <laughs> the everyone's alert one. And uh, yeah, just fun times. So, and also, you know, just being who I want to be and things like that. So this is how I manage things. It's the, okay, <laughs> all right, right. We're in bare minimum week in business. Okay, we're going to shift down into what's our, what's bare minimum week. We're going to communicate with everyone. We're going to be kind to ourselves. I'm going to focus on my health through this, okay, because that is essential to being able to stay on top of things and be strong mentally. And, uh, yeah, and then just understanding that 10 minutes can just be, you know, you know what, like, I don't have all the time in the world, but right now I have 10 minutes and I can move this one thing forward in 10 minutes. I can do that. It's very powerful. And being okay with being flexible around that movement and stuff. So if you are listening to this and you are, if you are still listening to this, thank you. <laughs> Definitely reach out and tell me you got to the end of this because yeah, uh, like I said, part talk therapy, but also motivation to help you decide how you want to handle these things. And if you do decide that you want to drop everything in your business, that's totally okay. There's no judgment coming from me on this one. It's just I'm in a situation where that's not how I want to handle things. I want to try out doing things a different way. And so this is how I'm going and moving through that. And really, when I have my chronic pain, I have to go into bare minimum days, um, you know, not necessarily bare minimum week, although sometimes bare minimum week. So this is a, a common occurrence for me. And this is something that, you know, allows me to shift down and then also shift up into, okay, I'm doing more stuff now and just being okay with all of those elements in my business and just being able to shift and adapt through that. So if you're listening to this and you want some help with any of this, then I encourage you to reach out, get talking to me, jump on like a free coffee chat call and we can get to know each other a bit or, you know, book into a free call. We can talk even more if you're thinking about working with me and wanting to be able to apply this to you. Like what does your bare minimum week look like? How do you apply this in your business? And then how do you not beat yourself up when, <laughs> when the first round doesn't work as planned? Okay. So I've been doing this for quite some time now. So when I make some plans, it's like, I kind of know how to make plans that I can stick to because I failed many, many times to get here. So just be aware with that and just, you know, not beat yourself up over it. How can you go out there and just sort of be your best self and be confident in that best self? And because that's the kind of stuff that helps you grow your coaching business and attracts coaching clients is that ability to be yourself, to be confident while being yourself, to be passionate about what you do while being yourself. And I ha harp on that being yourself part because that's like one of the things that I just found the hardest to unlock for me. It's just way easier to be this watered down version of myself that I thought other people wanted to see. Even now, everything in, well, actually not everything, but at least 25% of my brain is screaming at me to turn this off, to record it again. This is terrible because I paused. I lost track of where I was at. I had this outline that I had chat GPT help me make up based on a post that I wrote. And the outline was just, it's actually when I was in the middle of recording I realized it's just it's very repetitive especially the way my brain thinks so it's like okay I'm making things on the fly and part of me is just like no this is terrible but 
I, I share that because if you are newer in business or even if you're further along but you recognize these habits and just know that you're not alone, that you can do this, that you can be brave and do the things in your business, overcome the anxiety if that is your thing or just overcome the fear and self-doubt if that is your other thing or, yeah. (sighs) Sorry. My brain is trying to tell me that this is just ridiculous and why am I saying these words anyway thank you for listening I am not going to listen to that voice in my head thank you for listening if this is something that you want some help with or even if you got here if you vibed with this at all definitely reach out to me at Tiffany G Studios on Instagram okay no spaces no underscores t-i-f-f-a-n-y-g for golf s-t-u-d-i-o-s and yeah, just just know that we are all imperfect people doing our things, being brave, growing our businesses. And this is kind of a look into what I'm doing and how I am navigating through this new phase of my life at the moment. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. That's it from me for now.